It can often be surprising to learn about the diversity of human species throughout the course of prehistory, specifically in the Middle Pleistocene Epoch. Over this time, a number of human species thrived in the grasslands, forests, and eventually tundras of planet Earth, where they adapted into a number of new, intelligent, and sometimes even bizarre forms. As amazing as it is to learn about these species, it is not often easy for scientists to discern much about them. Many remains of some of these species are fragmentary at best, even the ones that lived alongside Homo sapiens. And there are so many different species from around this time that it can be hard for scientists to determine which remains belong to which species. Enter Homo naledi then, a species that became known to science as late as 2013. Homo naledi is an exception to this rule. Over 700 individual skeleton elements have been uncovered from one single cave in South Africa. And scientists have, as a result, been able to establish a lot of information on what this species was and how it lived. Today, we will be looking at the facts surrounding Homo naledi, from its initial evolution right through to its eventual discovery by modern humans just 10 years ago. Along the way, we will examine where and how this hominid lived and what it looked like based on the fossil finds known to science. Sit back and relax as we take you on a tour through time to explore the life and death of Homo naledi, the star man. Homo naledi is an archaic species of human that was known to inhabit the grasslands and caves of what is today South Africa, between around 335,000 to 236,000 years ago in the Middle Pleistocene Epoch. It is a species well known to science due to a large number of bones discovered at the Rising Star cave site, and scientists have been able to determine as a result that this was a species with characteristics of both contemporary humans and earlier Australopithecines. These hominids are thought to have had a relatively small cranial capacity when compared to modern humans, but were still intelligent. The skulls of two males unearthed from a cave in South Africa, for example, had cranial volumes of around 560 cubic centimeters. Consider that the average human today has a cranial volume of between 1,000 and roughly 1,200 cubic centimeters, and you can clearly see the difference in size. While the skull is smaller, it bears a similar overall shape to that of our own. It is slender, with distinct spaces for the temporal and occipital brain lobes. The frontal lobe of the brain, the part associated with tool use, sociality, and the production of language, is very similar to our own, implying that tool use, if not language, was something these hominids were familiar with. It is thought that Homo naledi matured at a much slower rate than Homo sapiens, determined by studies on the teeth. Their second molar teeth emerged much later on in life than in modern humans, although the front teeth essentially emerged at the same rate. Bones within the ears and a thick, prominent brow ridge, however, indicate that this hominid may have shared many facial characteristics with that of chimpanzees and gorillas. While Homo naledi would have discernibly been identifiable as a human species, it would likely have looked rather archaic given its rather recent placement in the fossil record. On average, it is thought that Homo naledi adults measured roughly 1.4 meters tall weighing about 39 to 40 kilograms. Males and females are thought to have measured and weighed about the same, with males only slightly larger. 
The shoulders were broad and robust, similar to those found in Australopithecines. The shoulder blades were located high up on the back, and the chest was narrow. The legs, it would seem, are similar in form and function to those belonging to the earlier Australopithecines. It is therefore thought that this species would not be an efficient runner. At least, it would not have been able to run for long periods of time. Rather, Homo naledi would most likely have taken to the trees to get out of harm's way when a hungry, big cat appeared in the area. The arms, however, appear to show more characteristics in line with modern humans. The metacarpal bones in the thumb were well adapted for holding, grasping, and manipulating heavy objects, with a great deal of support for the muscles. The well-developed palms of the hands were coated in pads, which, when combined with Homo naledi's robust and exceptionally long fingers, would have made this hominid an efficient tool user and climber. These adaptations are much more pronounced in adult Homo naledi than they were in the young individuals, implying that adults spent much more time climbing and using tools than the youngsters did. Homo naledi was discovered in the Rising Star cave system, in the paleoanthropological heritage site known as the Cradle of Humankind. The cave system sits about 30 miles northwest of Johannesburg in South Africa and is a massively important location for human evolution, having revealed many amazing finds over the years. Homo naledi was discovered on the 13th of September 2013 by cavers Rick Hunter and Stephen Tucker. They stumbled upon what were clearly the bones of a fossil human species while exploring the Dinaledi chamber of the Rising Star cave system, returning a few days later to take photos of the specimens. Paleoanthropologists from the region were able to observe the photos a week later who subsequently organized excavation efforts to take place in the cave. The bones were discovered about 80 meters from the entrance of the cave, in a chamber that had not been entered by human explorers since the early 1990s. The last cavers to enter the system may actually have inadvertently damaged the remains, as they appeared to have been rearranged from their logical resting places when the 2013 cavers came across them. It is thought that at least 15 individuals are represented from over 1,500 distinct pieces of bone, nine young individuals and six adults. Over 700 anatomical elements are represented by the bones in the Rising Star Cave, a staggering degree of completion. The remains were described formally by Berger et al. in 2015, two years later. Amongst the bones discovered in the cave are skull bones, mandibles, teeth, ear bones, shoulder blades, ribs, both arms and legs, and hands and feet. Both men and women, old and young, are represented and the site remains to this day the most fruitful location for hominid fossils in all of the African continent. The holotype specimen, known as DH1, is amongst the remains found at the Rising Star Cave, whose bones belong to a male. The name Homo naledi was chosen by paleoanthropologists, as it means star, after the Rising Star Cave system, in the Sutu language of Lesotho. A further three individuals, two adults and a child, were reportedly discovered in the Lesetti chamber of the same cave a few years later in 2017. As a result of its relatively low intelligence when compared to other species of Homo hominids, 
Homo naledi is thought to have branched off from the evolutionary line leading to later Homo species, much earlier than others. It has been considered that this may have begun to happen as early as just after the evolution of Homo habilis, the very first documented species in the Homo genus. This would mean that Homo naledi's ancestors branched off from our last common ancestor, nearly 900,000 years ago, and maybe even as early as the late Pliocene epoch. Another theory states that they were the descendants of hybrid hominids, formed as a result of interbreeding between a member of the Homo genus with a species of undetermined Australopithecine. If the latter is true, they may even have been a very isolated community, extant in a very close range around the area in which they were discovered. It's a fascinating topic, but one that will need to be studied in greater detail if an official concrete decision is to be made. Homo naledi may have been inadvertently driven to extinction by our own species, Homo sapiens, when they arrived on the scene around 300,000 years ago. Similar to the way it happened when humans interacted with the likes of Homo floresiensis in Indonesia and the Neanderthals in northern Eurasia, Homo naledi may not have been able to adapt to a more intelligent, better adapted species entering its domain, eventually going extinct when the pressures got too high. Either way, it is thought that this species did not pave the way for the existence of any further hominids within its lineage. Despite the fact that Homo naledi did not evolve an intellect in line with that of our own, it was still able to lead a complex lifestyle, with several behaviors you might not have expected. Homo naledi is associated with having made stone tools of the Acheulean industry variety, or possibly even those from the later Oldowan industry. Although few examples of Homo naledi's tools exist, the adaptations in the hands for grasping and manipulation, as well as its lineage and brain size, indicate that tool use would have been entirely possible. Basic stone cutting techniques would have been likely, with the species constructing simple stone scrapers and points. These would likely have been used to shape objects and butcher the carcasses of dead animals. The species also likely utilized tools such as sticks and stones to launch at attackers, but advanced weaponry such as spears and blades would have come in later species of different lineages. Many of Homo naledi's fossilized teeth show evidence of extensive wear and tear, which indicate that small particles of dirt and dust were present on the food they ate. These particles would have caused heavy abrasion on the teeth over time, likely the product of food that had not been washed such as roots and tubers plucked straight from the earth. Alternatively, the general arid nature of the grasslands and scrublands that Homo naledi inhabited could have simply blown onto the food items Homo naledi was eating, which can tell us a lot about what this hominid's habitat was like in the middle Pleistocene. Homo naledi's teeth were, like the Australopithecines before it, designed to chop and shear tough food, and it is thought that high numbers of seeds and nuts made up their diet. Exceptionally tough, stringy meat could be taken and consumed by these hominids too, such as muscle fibers and bone marrow. It is thought that later human species lost the ability to be able to tackle these materials with ease as a result of their advanced cooking techniques using fire to soften their food meant that they did not need to be able to chew it in its rawest, toughest form, and so the ability was lost. 
what is remarkable about the masses of bones found in the Dinaledi chamber of the Rising Star cave system in 2013 is that they appear to have been carried there. They did not die in this location. The bodies were complete and intact when they were moved, and there is no evidence that the bones were damaged when they were placed into the chamber, meaning that a predator could not have moved them there. Deep within the cave, the bodies have also been protected from the elements, wind, rain, and sand since the Middle Pleistocene. These people did not fall to their death inside the cave, and no evidence of a natural disaster has been found at the site. So how can this be explained? Amazingly, Homo Naledi may have used the Dinaledi chamber as a burial site for generations. This is thought to have been done to remove dead or decaying bodies from nearby living quarters preventing disease and the presence of carnivorous scavengers in the region. It could also show that these people were highly social, perhaps with a basic belief system, and may have even felt grief in the same manner we do when our loved ones pass. It has also been suggested that these bodies were not placed in the Dinaledi chamber by Homo Naledi, but by another species of Homo, more intellectually advanced than those the bodies belong to. Perhaps this was done to clear out an area of its previous dead occupants before moving in, or maybe even as a sign of respect. If another species did place these Homo naledi remains in the cave, perhaps they did not recognize them as a different species, or maybe they had decayed to the point where they were unrecognizable, having died from a previous event, such as a disease outbreak. This is all speculation, of course, but it's fascinating to explore possible theories. If the burial theory is true, this would be the oldest known example of it happening in the human fossil record. Homo naledi lived, as we know, in the area which is now composed of South Africa, on the southernmost tip of the African continent. The area at the time Homo naledi was walking the land would have been remarkably similar to that of today, characterized by sprawling grasslands, scrublands, open forests, and rocky outcrops, the latter of which would have been a reliable location for these hominids to seek shelter in caves. Homo naledi only existed in South Africa a relative stone's throw ago on the geological timescale, and as a result, many of the animals and plants present in the region then would be recognizable today. Antelope and buffalo would have been commonplace amongst the long grasses and warm forests of the land, the former of which may have been hunted actively by troops of Homo naledi. Larger animals, in the forms of giraffes, elephants, and rhinoceroses, would have appeared on the plains occasionally, as well as more dangerous animals, such as hyenas, leopards, and lions. Primates, most commonly in the form of baboons, would have lived on the rocks and hills of the region, and common water birds, such as cranes, ducks, and rails, would have wandered around the watering holes, used by Homo naledi as a reliable source of hydration. A few less familiar animals would have wandered into Homo naledi territory every now and then too. Sinceris Antiquus, the giant buffalo for example, would have been present on the continent at the same time Homo naledi was gathering in South Africa. It likely resembled its modern relatives, only three meters long, with an equally lengthy horn span. Homo Therium, a late surviving genus of scimitar-toothed cat, 
may have taken unwary Homo naledi individuals as an easy meal, springing up from the long grasses when it was too late for the unlucky hominid to defend itself. On top of this, this species would have frequently met with the likes of Homo erectus and Homo heidelbergensis, two further archaic species of humans, albeit not part of the same lineage as Homo naledi. The story of Homo naledi is one that we have much to learn about, but it remains, even with its scattered details, one of the most interesting of the Pleistocene. The thought of our ancestors coexisting with a relic of early human evolution, a species that may have even been the direct result of hybrid Australopithecine ancestors, is a fascinating one. Homo naledi is a testament to the diversity of human evolution, almost an evolutionary anomaly amongst the ever-increasing brain sizes of the middle and late Pleistocene epochs. Hopefully, with further studies and discoveries ongoing of this species, scientists working on the remains of Homo naledi will be able to uncover the full story in time. <laughs>